I'd like to start today with a bit of a story. You might be familiar with it. It's called the tortoise and the hare. One day there was a tortoise and the hare. The hare was winning absolutely everything and loved to gloat about its achievements. The tortoise, meanwhile, was usually in the race, though so far back he wouldn't have known about it. This went on for many months until one day, mid-race, the hare miles ahead of the tortoise as per usual. It was told that it couldn't have flexi front wings anymore and with its advantage exposed, the tortoise shot past, told the hare to go f*** itself and won the race. I'll be honest, I never remember the end of that story, so I just made it up but it does rather sum up what happened at Singapore this weekend. Hey there guys, I'm Will, welcome to FP1 and the Comedy Review, the series that hits harder than Stroll going into the barriers at Singapore. It's been a packed two weeks since Max Verstappen's last dominant victory, full of technical directives, driver news, racism. It's going to be a busy video, isn't it? Might as well roll that intro then. Right, let's begin with the news, and we'll get the transfer talk out of the way first. Or should I say lack of transfers as Zhou Guan Yu was confirmed as staying at Alfa Romeo into 2024. Regular viewers of the channel will know I've got a soft spot for Zhou, and I think this decision is the right one. Though I'll admit I do feel bad for Porteo Pulcher. Even when the Frenchman does more of the winning and less of the crashing, he's still stuck in that reserve driver role. Also in the news was Helmut Marco, which is never a good sign, is it? Now Red Bull have a pretty big driver problem at the moment, with effectively four seats, though five capable drivers that all deserve a spot in Formula 1. It seems like their new strategy to solve this issue is the same one your partner might use if they'd like to break up with you. Rather than be a man about it, they just treat you like shit until you decide to call things a day yourself. This sure sounds like past trauma coming to the surface, but I'd need to have a girlfriend in that case. You know what, moving on. Point is, Marco decided to adopt this approach as he took to Red Bull's social channels and blurted racist abuse towards Sergio Perez. The Red Bull advisor received a warning from the FIA in return, as well as an invite to Jos Verstappen's dickhead club. Oh, and Rocket are set to refile their legal case against the Williams Formula 1 team. Remember them? No. Yeah, me neither, let's get to FP1. Once again, we had new liveries on display in this session, with Williams rolling out their B-Tech Golf McLaren, which they'll use for the next three races of the season. Speaking of McLaren, they also had a new look, which I'll be honest, I've had to come back and add into the video, as I'd already forgotten about it. Despite their stealth mode looking more like a means of stripping even more paint off the car, I can't lie, I do kind of like it. Here's hoping the blue gets thrown in the bin full time for 2024. Singapore themselves were also debuting a new look, with a remodeled Sector 3 presenting a new overtaking opportunity for Max Verstappen. That being said, the Red Bulls seem to be struggling this weekend. <laughs> No, hold your horses, it's not qualifying yet. Admittedly though, in a weekend just after new FIA technical directives were launched, banning flexi wings and floors, the runaway leaders were suddenly in trouble. Though, according to Christian Horner, there was no link between the events. A bit like there's no link between AlphaTauri writing rapid on their car and their actual pace. The other talking point during FP1 was the local wildlife. Can you tell nothing interesting happened on the circuit or what? The lizards were back crawling over the track, or being yeeted into the crowd if you were Fernando Alonso. There's not much really that F1 can do about this, as the lizards are a protected species and thus allowed to roam the track whenever they feel like it. A bit like Lance Stroll then. It would be a Ferrari 1-2 after first practice, and that would continue into FP2, as science took top honours at the end of Friday. It wasn't all plain sailing though, and look, I knew Red Bull was slow, but bloody hell. Both Verstappen and Perez were really off the pace. Hang on, let me correct that. Verstappen was really off the pace, and Perez was just driving like he had since Baku. They found themselves behind the Mercedes and Fernando Alonso. The Aston Martin driver won the inaugural Singapore Grand Prix back in 2008, though with no Nelson Piquet on the grid this weekend, repeating that feat was sure going to be a challenge. Miraculously though, no one had found the Singapore barriers yet. Well, apart from that lizard earlier anyway. And that trend was set to continue as we rolled into Saturday. It was more of the same. Ferrari still on form, 
and Red Bull still crying, and what a shame that was. Mercedes started to turn up the wick as well, with George Russell finishing an impressive P2, and Lando Norris also putting in a decent lap for third. Further down the field, Liam Lawson forgot whether Turn 3 was a left-hander or not, as he went right and just kept out of the walls, whilst Alex Albon was also flirting with the barriers late on. Given we were at a street track, F1 had got their wall distance graphic back for this weekend, and Lance Stroll saw this as a challenge to get it into negative figures come Q1. With the track improving late on, everyone was pushing, and as Stroll's car snapped at the final corner, he would end the session, and as it turned out his whole weekend early, in a crash that is somehow the Weybridge's fault. Okay then. Oscar Piastri was unlucky to be caught out by the red flag, forcing him to the back for Sunday, as all the while Max Verstappen's weekend got worse, when he was placed under investigation for blatantly stopping at the end of the pit lane. The Dutchman then got into more trouble during Q2, holding up Yuki Tsunoda, who would then fail to get out of the session. Karma would bite back, however, as Red Bull's pace continued to flounder. Verstappen's final time was only good enough for 10th, before Liam Lawson crossed the line to bump the reigning world champion out and likely end his F1 career in the process. Things looked even worse for Max when you remember those impeding calls. However, the FIA were quick to open the Verstappen rulebook and realise that because it's the Dutchman, these things are completely allowed. I'll get some hate in the comments for that, I'm sure, but honestly, FIA consistency this weekend has just been a hot mess. At least we now had the first interesting Q3 to look forward to all year, with no Red Bulls making an appearance for the first time since 2018, and fans got exactly what they've been asking for, with a super close battle between the Ferraris and Mercedes. In the end, it was Carlos Sainz who hooked a lap together that was good enough for pole, making it two in a row and this time there was no guarantee of a Red Bull storming through the field to victory. That leaves us with a very exciting prospect for Sunday. But before we get to that, I've got some more opportunities for you to win tickets to the US Grand Prix later in the year. And it's all thank you to Head Out for sponsoring this video. Formula One is returning to the States in a month's time, as the circuit heads to Cota, or in more controversial words, the only good American circuit on the calendar. It's also going to be a sprint weekend, of course, and you can get that begrudging moan out the way now. As someone who's been lucky enough to see two of these live, I can tell you that the experience is just so much better. And beyond that, there's a whole lot more going on away from the racing be that the fan zone, Cota's selection of rides and attractions, and of course the concerts, which this year will be headlined by Queen and the Killers. Only downside is that these events are usually, well, bloody expensive. But that's where Head Out come in. They offer the best Grand Prix tickets for the best prices. In this case, a full weekend experience for just $300 for the first 10 people who use the code on screen at checkout. I've also hidden two codes throughout this comedy review. They will get you a ticket completely for free if you're the first to redeem it. Let me know on Twitter, by the way, if you're a lucky winner. If you get into this video a little bit later, then you can always use FP130 for 30% off your tickets regardless. So a huge thank you to Head Out once again. Now on to race day. Sunday would bring about terrible news. Lance Stroll would not be competing after his qualifying crash the day before. So as the strategists scrambled to factor one less safety car into their run plans, the 19 remaining drivers were gearing up for lights out. Science got away well, but the same couldn't be said for George Russell, whose first lap got worse when he was passed by his teammate. Lewis doing so by making up his own version of the Singapore Term 1 layout. The Mercedes infighting allowed the Ferraris to push ahead, whilst further back, Yuki Tsunoda was already out, and despite this, it was still an improvement on his Monza performance. Max Verstappen, meanwhile, was stuck behind a Haas, which is a shame. Anyway, we'll move on to the front runners, and now we were beginning to talk about strategy. Mercedes expected Ferrari to, quote, sacrifice Leclerc, which in fairness is what they usually do, strategy or not. For the only race of the year that wasn't being dominated by a Red Bull, things were looking a little quiet. Even McLaren were playing the game Sky Sports usually play and declaring there was some weather on the way. The chances of that were very low, however. Sergeant hitting the wall, on the other hand, that's much higher, and out came the safety car. That meant it was time for Leclerc's race to hit the fan, the Monegasque being held for traffic and dropping behind both Russell and the McLaren of Lando Norris. With the Red Bulls staying out and going long on hard tyres, the race was finally getting interesting. Sainz had a good restart and easily held off Verstappen. Further back, Charles Leclerc was giving up on life and almost ended it by piling into Lando Norris. The slow Red Bulls were creating action wherever you looked, and with Leclerc removing himself from the equation, 
things were now hotting up at the front between Russell and Sainz. The gap between those two fluctuated around the one second mark, which I probably should have been invested in, though it was far more entertaining watching the Red Bulls bring the Singapore track back to 23 corners. When they finally pit with just 20 laps to go, they found themselves 15th and 17th. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've, look, I've tried to be neutral all year, but <laughs> this is too funny. <laughs> Luck really wasn't playing into their hands, as the safety car they needed before the stop was now out. Esty Bestie being grumpy rumpy when his Alpine exploded at Turn 1. Mercedes were about to take the gamble, though, double stacking as Sainz and Ferrari stayed out. Now this is getting tasty. By lap 53, George Russell was onto the podium, and as the Mercs began to close the gap to Carlos in the lead, all of a sudden, Lando Norris was on the pace as well. That gave us an epic four-way fight in the final four laps, and come the final tour, it was Sainz from Norris from Russell from Hamilton. For the tyre advantage the Mercs had, Russell was admittedly bottling it a bit. Now Hamilton looked like he had the better shots, but the team couldn't ask George to give up on a podium on that final lap. His car could, though. As gunshots were heard around the Marina Bay street circuit, it was Carlos Sainz who came across the line to take a stunning second victory in Formula 1. And you know what? Hats off to young Liam Lawson too. P9 and points in only his third race. Fair play. Honestly, though, what a Grand Prix. And do you know what? Can Red Bull just not show up to any of the other races this season? My view and subscriber count would greatly appreciate it. If you did enjoy the comedy review, though, be sure to drop it a thumbs up and get subscribed if you haven't already. I'm trying to get to 100,000 subs by the end of the year, and you guys knocked it out of the park after last week's videos, so thank you so much. Thanks as well to Head Out for sponsoring this video, and to all my patrons and channel members for your continued support. They get early access to some of my videos, so if that interests you, then you can check out the links in the description below. Anyway, for now, that's all from me. I'll be back next week for the Japanese Grand Prix, but until then, have a good one.